and they read, Let every soul be subject unto the highest powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the audience of God, and they that resist shall receive to them damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscious sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. I read to you Romans chapter 13. May God have a blessing to the readers who listen to the words of this morning. Lord, we please bow our hands in prayer. Holy Father, we come to you today with our heads bowed down, but our hearts are elevated. We're asking you to look over the blessings. As we slept and slumbered last night, we were not conscious of what was going on, but you looked over us and you kept us. So we ask that you to keep us even now in our wake hours because it's still as if we were slumbering, but we're just wandering through this journey that you call life. So we might be able to do the things that you want us to do and you are asking us to do. We're asking you to bless those who are bereaved, give them comfort. We're asking you to bless those who are just confused. They might not know what they're doing, but they're just going through this thing. And we're asking you to help them to life because that's what you said you would do as long as we believe and depend on you. We ask you to bless this church, bless the mothers of this church, not only just the mothers, but all the leaders of this church. Give them the leadership ability so that they might lead your people in the way that you would want them to be led. We're asking you to bless the children of this church because they'll be the leaders of the bar. So that they'll be the type of leaders you would want them to be in the future. We ask you to bless the fathers because they're the backbone of the people that this church. Because where the man goes, the leader usually follow. But sometimes it's vice versa. So we ask you to work together with them so that they might be able to come to some agreement and they'll be able to be as one as you. Psalms 23, everybody. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on, help me. He maketh me lie down. Hey, come on, church. Uh huh. Yeah. That's it, Keisha. And he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his 
Yeah, you know why. Come on, church. Come on, church. Yeah, uh huh. Come on. Feel with the noise. My 
you ready to head out? Can we clap our hands for our teams? Our teams? We're going to youth ministry. Come on, let's celebrate. You are welcome. Your word is final. 
Right. Now, now, here's the thing. I'm not looking for a lot of amen. This is not one right. of those say yeah messages. Yeah. This is really going to be, hey, we're going to talk, but we're going to let the word do a lot of it. I'm sorry, all of the talking for yeah. us. This is not an indictment to say who's right and who's wrong. Right. This is just to say, God, what do you say? Yeah. I got a question. How many people will really trust God? Yeah. Okay. Now, there's been times in my life I haven't trusted him because I can't touch him. I can't feel him. I, don't, I have never seen God. So to take a book that men have abused and used to, matter of fact, uh, white men put black people in slavery by this. Okay, cults have been started by this. Uh, many false religions use this. So then you want me to believe what you're saying. But all these other people have used this the same way you get ready to use it, and they use it for wrong. That's why I love what God does 2,000 years ago. He put a scripture in there. He says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah, yeah. Coach, I just recognized that, that was you, Coach. I didn't recognize that. We have used to play. He played with us on Thursday night. Coach, thank you for coming. Amen. So, so I want to see what the word says. All right, so let's look at a couple of things. Deacon Amos, do we have King James or ESV version? We have King James, I can use it. King James, King James Version, okay. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7. Let's look at verse 42, because as I was driving, I said, Lord, how do I pull in abortion with what I'm teaching? Here's what the Holy Ghost said. He said, Stephen preached on it. I said, no, Stephen didn't. I've read Acts 7. I've been preaching 22 years. I've never seen Stephen preach on abortion. There's, matter of fact, let me help some of you all out. The word abortion is not in the Bible. The word trinity is not in the Bible. But they are both talked about by God. And we have to look at the scriptures, okay? So I said, where's that? Go to Acts chapter 7. Let's look at verse 42. Now, let me give you a preface about what I was talking about on Wednesday night. Wednesday night, I dealt with chapter 6 to 8. Chapter 7, uh, there was a stir going on in the church who has been groaning. Because remember what I told you, that the title of Acts should be the Acts of the Holy Ghost through the Apostles. So all we've been seeing through chapters 1 through 6, all we've been seeing is God working through the Holy Ghost through men and women to build this church. Okay, chapter 6, let me give you a, a little, little background. Chapter 6, there was this man by the name of Stephen, and God is using him. And can I help some of y'all out? Stephen is a deacon. Mm -hmm. Chapter 6, the Bible tells you that Stephen is chosen with other men. And here is the prerequisite for Stephen. Stephen needs to be full of wisdom and full of the Holy Ghost and have a good report. Yeah, yeah. He's a deacon, and he's doing all of these miracles. Chapter 6, these men start lying on Stephen. They said, he's been blaspheming God. Go back and read it. He's been blaspheming the word of God. Chapter 7, verse 1. Here's the first words that we have in chapter 7, verse 1. Are these things true? That's what the chief Pharisee says to Stephen. He says, are these things true? And instead of Stephen doing what we do, start, start defending himself, here's what Stephen does. He starts preaching. Verse number 2 in chapter 7, Stephen talks about Abraham. What the world Abraham got to do with what you're about to go through? Because Stephen said, you don't need to hear my defense. You need to hear the word of God. Y'all miss your place to shout. You don't need me to defend myself against you. You need the word of God. How your life is going to be fixed yeah. is through God's word. Yeah. Every answer yeah. to every problem yeah. is found in God's word. Come on here. If you want to be healed, it's in God's word. If you want to be held mentally, it's in his word. That's what the Bible in verse 1 Peter says. I'll give you all things. 2 Peter, I'll give you all things that pertain to life. And Amen. Let me slow down. Yes, sir. Peter Stephen starts preaching. He starts preaching and he starts really hitting them where it hurts. Right. Look what he says in verse 42. He says, then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. He's saying that Israel was so uh, hard-headed, Israel was so stiff-necked, that they start worshiping the heavens. You ever heard somebody say, your energy's off. You know, you, you, you got bad energy. 
That's an Eastern religion and philosophy. We don't believe in energy. We don't believe in that. We believe in the Holy Ghost. Either you're saved or you're not saved. There's no such thing as energy. What you're really trying to say is something's off, and the something has a name. He is the third person of the Trinity. His name is Holy Ghost. Some, the Holy Ghost is telling me something's not right. There's no such thing as women intuition. I know it wouldn't be no amen there. I knew it. I knew it. And fellas, y'all didn't even work because y'all supposed to have my back. Y'all look like, I don't want to get in trouble. Man, forget all that. Ain't no woman intuition. It's Holy Ghost. Thank you, Mr. Charlie. It's Holy Ghost. Me and like, I ain't got your back. Well, I'll pass out of here. You can leave me out here by myself. It's the truth, anyhow. There's no woman. You have the whole, the Holy Ghost. That woman's intuition is the Holy Ghost. And you know how I know some of those women's intuition? Because y'all still make bad mistakes. Thank you for the one class. I, I choose violence every Sunday. It's okay. It is the whole, it has a name. Holy Ghost. He says, y'all in turn uh, from worshiping God and worshiping the moon and the heavens. You can read it. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Have you done what I asked you to do? This is what Stephen is saying to them. Verse 43 is what the ghost told me to go. Look at verse 43. Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Molech. Now, if you're, just, if you're just reading this, you're like, that don't mean nothing. And I read this for 22 years and never made the connection. That, that the tabernacle of Molech was a Canaanite goddess. And while the children of Israel walking through the wilderness, walking with God, they had got infiltrated by Canaanites. And Canaanites had a practice. Here's one of their practices. They would offer their children as living sacrifices to Molech. I ain't talking about spiritual living sacrifices. I'm talking about literally your newborn baby comes out of the womb. They would take this baby and lay it on an altar to be burned. And Israel was practicing some of this same foolishness. He says, Stephen recounts to them, and Stephen is preaching the Old Testament, he's saying, you took up the tabernacle of the land. In other words, you did what the world did. Hey, stop, stop. Listen, did I make that up? Is it right there? Has it always been there? So here is the issue this morning. It's when Christians endorse something that God has not blessed. That's the real issue. It's that we as Christians say, I don't want to be mean. Truth is not mean. Tone is mean. You go to hell if you have a tone. You may go to get right back to the tone. He says, speak the truth yeah. in love. Now, how do you do that? Right, right. Sometimes I got to scream, hey! Because you might be going for a cliff. But if I'm right next to you, I got to scream at you. Right. Right. I mean, Pastor, why do you scream every Sunday? Because I'm celebrating. He got up. <laughs> <laughs> every Sunday, I'm screaming. Yeah. So, Tom, he says, Stephen says, you took up the tap and I go for that. So, let's look at a couple of things this morning. Because I don't have a lot of time, and I'll come back to this next week, too. Um, let me go here real quickly. All right. Here are five fundamental questions that we want to let God answer. Yeah. Not me. Yeah. Not the world. Because, see, if you listen to the world, they'll frame it however they need to frame it to make sense. Case in point. Why do we still have voting rights anniversaries every year? Because some ignorant men, when they started the country, wanted to keep slaves. And they wanted to be slaves to be property, so they didn't let slaves vote. So guess what we had to do? We had to get an amendment to the Constitution. So that people, people, not property, people could vote. And so because of that, 
men will amend whatever they got to amend to make it make sense for them. Y'all miss your place. So the world will amend, they will tell you pregnancy doesn't start till six weeks or after six weeks or five weeks or whatever. You, then you can't do them. They're amending to make sense of what they want to do. But let's just look at the scriptures. Y'all ready? Question number one. This is harsh, but I want to tear the bandaid off. I don't want to, you know, ease it off. Number one, uh, can we go to those questions real quick, D? Uh, number one, is abortion sin? Answer is yes. I'm going to show you in the scripture. It is yes. Look at the second question to give you hope. Is that sin unforgivable? No. This is a place of restoration, transformation, and we serve a God that you should praise that forgives you for everything that you've done wrong. Y'all can't even shop because you don't know you, you can't get past number one. But God will forgive you. You know how I know? Because you keep waking up. You serve a forgiving God. You serve a God that loves you in spite of you. What you mean? Scriptures say, while you were yet a sinner, can I preach? He died. Did he die? So, so it's not unforgivable. No, no. Don't, don't let nobody tell you that. Don't let the devil tell you that, that you can't be forgiven. Number three. Number three. Will this church condemn you if you have an abortion? No. Absolutely not. We all saved by grace. We all in here trying to get right here for Jesus. We all, that's why we show up. I didn't show up to see what you had on. I showed up to meet him. And to do kononia. Yeah, that the fellowship of the believers gives me strength. Because Monday's coming. I don't know what's going to wait for me Monday. But now that I know I got some brothers and sisters yeah. praying, I can make it. Yeah. Tell me somebody say you can make it. Yeah. Will yeah. this church ever support abortion? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Why? Because question number one, it's a sin. Yeah. We can't support sin. Right. We don't judge it because God's already judged it. We try to walk alongside you and help you become a disciple of the Lord Jesus. We will never support it. We won't support it because the Bible doesn't support it. We will not support uh, abortion after this. We don't support that because it is sin. Look at the last two questions. Can a man tell a woman what to do with her body? No. I ain't never had no child. And don't want to. Because there's no place for it to come. Unless it's only men. So I know I can't tell you what to do. Last question though is going to start our sermon. Can God tell a woman what to do in her body? There's no question. So let's see what he says in his word to the church. This is not an indictment to abortions or abortionists. This is, a, this, is, this is a teaching for the church to take a stand for righteousness. Our Western culture is getting eviler. It's getting darker. I don't know what the word of pansexual is. Yes, yes. They're just coming up with stuff now. Yes, yes, Pastor. I told you this a couple weeks yeah. ago. How can you choose your pronoun? That's, that's not how life works. Okay, from here on out, three plus three equals seven. From here on out, care what you say. And if you don't, I'm going to be offended and we're going to fight. I'm going to bully you. I'm going to get on your Facebook page and talk about all your sin because you don't agree that three plus three equals seven. And you a preacher, three plus three plus seven. That's hate. That's hate. That's hate. You hate me. Yes. Three plus three equals six. And so this is what the church has to contend. You see what we just did? Now some of y'all are like, y'all really know. Trying to show y'all what the world is doing. And here we are just sitting on the sideline. He'll figure it out. Now nobody preaches. Now I got my own skeletons. Yes, we do. We, 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 we established that years ago. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Okay. Now what? Because think about this. Parent, all the parents, raise your hand. Okay. All the parents that still believe in spankings. Wait, no, 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 no. 
<laughs> okay. If if you did not discipline your children because you were not perfect, you would have a rascal on your hand. Right. You sure will. They want to fight back. You show grace in your discipline of your children because you know what rascal you were. <laughs> so preaching is that I'm not perfect it doesn't discount that I can't preach on this and I answered it I can't tell a woman what to do but God can here it is alright so how does alright write these two scriptures down 2 Timothy 3.16 all scriptures given by the inspiration of God Every scripture that we're going to read was given by God. A man did not write the Bible. A white man didn't write the Bible. I'm a black activist. God wrote the Bible. A man transcribed it. Follow me. So you can't blame white man. You can't blame black man. You can't blame the Indian. If you're going to blame somebody, but you better watch your mouth, it's God. That's who you should be blaming if you're mad. Because the white man didn't oppress the slave. They misconstrued the scriptures and oppressed. Okay? Deuteronomy 4 and 2. I want to go to that one. Deuteronomy 4 and 2. Write it down. Here's what the scriptures say. Um, Ye shall not add unto the word which I commanded you. Now the reason I started with the New Testament scripture, for all the people like, that's Old Testament. All scripture. Just probably down just a little bit. All scripture given by the inspiration of God. So Deuteronomy is profitable for you. Okay? He says, don't add to the word. Don't add to the word which I command you. Neither shall you diminish off from me. Okay? That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I give what? Command me. This is God's word through Moses to his people. He said, don't add to the word. Right. Don't take from it. Right, Pastor. So I can't make something that I want. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I can't add something to the word to fit my situation. Right, right, right. Right? Right. Um, I can't say, well, because my parents had issues yeah. and your parents had issues, we're not going to get married. We're just going to live together because I don't want to get a divorce. Right. I can't say that. I got to say what God said. Right? I gotta say that if I really I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk with a mic. Yeah. Because y'all wanna get off of this. Yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just just y'all edit that out. Turn me up and say what this one got in the Okay. So um I have to say what God's word says. I was trying to be free, but it's not gonna let me be free today. Alright, so what is God's view on abortion? God views life that proceeds the womb and in the womb. So, so the Lord looks at life before the womb and in the womb. Let's look at some texts with this. Let's go to Psalms 139. 139. Look at verse 14. God views life. Okay. Again, this is not an indictment. This is just good Bible teaching on where the church should stand. And if you go out of here pointing your finger, well, my pastor told me to tell you, you lying on me. I didn't tell you to do that. But I told you to do you harm, so you're not deceived. But now you can walk in love and help somebody else make the right decision. Because if you leave here armed, ready to fight everybody, then you're not really understanding your role as a Christian in the world. It's not to prove people right. It's to show them Jesus. Can I get a witness from anybody? You're right. You're wrong. It's bloods and creeps. Ain't nobody getting saved. Right. Jesus. Help. He says, I will praise thee. This is David talking. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. He's praising God. And that my soul knoweth right well. So he says, I'm going to praise you because I've been made fearfully and wonderfully in your image. So stop doing this body shaming. Stop comparing yourself to other Amen. people. Y'all really think I care about boys? Don't look at them out of me. 
I am who I am. Dad, God, and all. I just give God praise for it. Do my little self and push it, but I keep it moving. Yeah. My substance was not hid from me. When I was made where? Okay, Hebrew God made in secret. He's talking about the womb. Because, okay, Ecclesiastes furthers this. What goes on in a woman's womb when the baby's being formed? Nobody knows. On even a, what's that thing they put on your stomach? Oh, that's Only that's gives you a picture. It's been a while since I've had to do one of those. <laughs> twelve was my youngest, so it's been twelve. And we ain't going back. The shop is closed. <laughs> And I always said like that she said. <laughs> and I want to talk about that because I know somebody's thinking about birth control. So I'm going to talk about that too. No, no, I got to. You know why? Because if you want, if I walk around here thinking you know, somebody in the barbershop is going to tell you something and you're going to believe it. And now I got to deal with that unteaching that. It's like I deal with it all. Here it is. Yeah, I got to deal with it all. Biblically though. Look at verse 15, I was, when I was made a secret. I didn't come to Sunday to hear me as well. This is what you're getting. <laughs> and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. He's talking about the womb. Go back and read every Hebrew Bible. This is talking about the womb. He, David said, my suffering was hid from thee. And when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, look at verse 16, thine eyes did see my sufferings. So while I was secretly being made, God saw me. When I was being formed in my mother's womb, God was looking at that. Y'all remember what Joseph said? He told Potiphar's wife, it ain't that I can't have you, Potiphar's wife, but I don't want to sin against God. See, he could have got away with it. He could have slept with Potiphar's wife. Nobody would have known. He was second in command. But, but Joseph said, no, this is about me and God. Yeah. Right. This is really about the Preach. church standing up and saying, hey, Preach. although you're going through that, yes. I don't endorse that. Yes. Yes. He says, uh, 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 my son says, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written. All of my members were written. All of my members were written. All of my members were written. And watch this. Which is continuous for fashion when as yet there was none of them. In other words, before when I was an embryo, he knew because my members were written in the book. And I was in the secret parts of my mother's womb. But God still knew me whether I was an embryo or six weeks senior. Let's read it again because I got kind of fast there. I don't want you to miss it. Let's read it again. Now I didn't see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which is continuous for fashion, when as yet there was none of them. In other words, I was being fashioned even when I didn't have it. Yeah. Preach fashion. That's this beautiful. is what God says That's about beautiful. the womb. That's what Isaiah 44, 24. Isaiah 44, 24. Turn me up just a little bit more, Dean, right there. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, thy who? Redeemer. And he that did what? Lord. From what? Lord. So who's doing the forming? God. According to what? Uh, according to what scripture? 4424. 44, 24. So according to this, if we read no other scripture according to this one, it says there's no way to mess this up. And, and he that formed me from the womb, I am the Lord that did what? Make it. Oh, okay. Stop it. That's, that's, that's good news. Yes. Yes, it is. God makes all things. Oh, okay. Now, okay, finish. Okay, yes, sir. I'll finish. Then strap this forth by heavens alone. Don't y'all just, I'm talking to God. He's telling me to finish it. I'm about to tell you something. He said, it's finished. Then he's Alone. Then spread it abroad the earth by the Okay, I'm done with the teach. Here it is. Now watch this. If you think about it, the argument is, Pastor, the circumstance. Yeah, yeah. This happened. Yeah. That happened. Yeah. Rape. Right. Incest. 
you're going to tell me, you're going to sit here and tell me that a loving God wants me to keep that situation. No, because the child is not the situation. The situation is the situation. And God, just before you shout, listen to me all the way through. God can take something bad. You know how I know? I'm looking at some bad situations that he turned for your good. Yeah, you ain't got to clap, but you was bad. You was low down. You was lying. But he took the bad in you and made it good. Scream at somebody and say, he made me good. Not because of what I've done, but because of what he did. Because if he makes all things, okay, I shared with y'all a couple of years ago, I'm not going to repeat it, but I was touched inappropriately as a child, okay? Now watch this, as a young, young man, watch this, I could have used that as an excuse to become a homosexual. I was touched, so, but I knew that was wrong. I thought, that don't even feel right. Now, everybody don't have that testimony. Right, right, right. Told somebody, I don't know what happened to the individual, but it happened, and I've had to deal with that. Guess what? It is what it is. But I don't leave them there to say, well, because of that. Yeah. yeah. Preach, Pastor. Preach. Preach. I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah. Because y'all think we preach from a place that we don't understand what you're going through. Yeah. 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 It just didn't feel, I was like, that, that, ain't, that ain't right. I ain't saying what, I had no scripture. I just knew that it was sending me that one right. Here's my point. If he makes all things, it's God that lets you get pregnant. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I did some research, I'm not a doctor. Right. So, so the first two weeks, you're not really even pregnant. Because your body is preparing to ovulate like normal. This right. is Prepare to ovulate. Right. And how you know you're pregnant is that there's no cycle. Right, right, right. Ladies help me here. Right, right. There's no cycle. Right. So the term abortion means the termination of a pregnancy. Yes. The termination. Right. So the church can endorse termination of life. Right, right. You're right. Because the egg is ready to, right. to, to ovulate, it yeah. gets through the tube, and after intercourse, I'm glad our children are here, after intercourse, they probably know most of the stuff that I'm saying, after, <laughs> after, <laughs> after intercourse, right. there's a sperm waiting to fertilize that egg. Right. That egg is fertilized, I know you have a couple of signs, but I'm trying to help you, and, 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 and that sperm fertilizes that egg, and guess what happens? Then there is that egg goes through its normal process, and it is ready to produce this process. So the first two weeks, you don't even know what's going on. The moment that you know that you're pregnant, there has to be light growing on the inside. That's right. And this is why the church is so adamant about abortion, because it says right here, he made it all things. So let's say the situation wasn't good. Well, God had to allow the pregnancy because some, all sexual acts don't produce children. And even the, the, uh, the doctor, when they you know, give you stuff to help, that stuff don't always work. So it has to be God at the end of the day. Don't y'all get uncomfortable. This is church. It has to be God doing all of this. He make it so he makes bad situations good. Yeah. You were, yeah. the situation wasn't good. He said, allowed to happen. Yeah. Right. And we believe that God right. has given everybody a purpose. Yeah. 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 Can, I, can I just do something real quickly? Yeah. Go to Ephesians, uh, go to Ephesians, Exodus chapter 4. Chapter I want to show you something. It's not in my notes, but it's, it's in my head. Yes, in my spirit. Exodus chapter 4, I believe it is. Give me a second. And I believe it's verse 11, maybe. Um, give me a second. Y'all probably get there before I do. Yep, yep, it's 4 and 11. Um, 
Read that for me. You got it? Read it for me real quick. Read it. Read it loud. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the sea, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Right. Now, Moses is, is telling God, I can't talk because I'm slow speech. Y'all remember that encounter? Yeah. Yeah. God says, I make the blind, the seen, the deaf, the dumb, that means people that can't talk. He says, Is, isn't it I that make them all? So that means if a child is born with a deformity, they still have purpose because God made them. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. That's beautiful. That. And the reason that a lot of people are getting uncomfortable right now is yeah. because what I'm saying is that yeah. we really don't want to confront. What we want to just say is that's their thing. And it's time out for that. Yeah. Right. We are living in the end times. Jesus is on his way back. And if we don't start preaching this message, this uncompromising gospel, people are going to hell in a handbasket. But we are the church, Matthew 5. We are a light set on the hill that cannot be hidden. We need to let our light so shine. Jesus on his way back. I know y'all don't think, I know y'all got think y'all got time, vacation, time coming up. He can come back on your vacation. Turn to somebody and say, be he also ready. People getting uncomfortable. Like, I don't want to hear it. Well, you got to. Because if you don't hear it from me, you hear it from anybody. Look at this. I've created all things that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spread the broad the earth by myself. This is what God's view. Write the scripture down, uh, Job 31 and 15. Just write it down. Let's just go to it real quickly. Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion in the womb? Here's a, here's a good place for y'all to shop. God did it. Yeah. He's in control. Yeah. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Right. He made you. Right. But there are people who feel like they're in power. No. That's why I said, what does he say about this? Yeah. Right. All right. Now, write this point down. The Bible is not meant to shame. But it is a point to, you, to your only hope, Jesus. Write it down again. The Bible is not meant to use as shame. Not to shame you or make you feel bad. It is to point you to your only hope. Your only hope. Your only hope. Let me say it again. Your only hope. And I got a good job. Please. They'll fire you before you know it. No, I got tenure. They will fire you before you know it. They'll, come, they'll trump some charges up to fire you. Your only hope, I got retirement. Your only hope, I got a good house. Your only hope, Jesus. That's it. Well, I don't know. Your only hope, it doesn't matter what you think or what I think, our only hope is Christ. Watch this now. So let's be God's view. All right, so um, Leviticus 17 and 11. Leviticus 17 and 11. I'm skipping around a little bit deep, but let's go to Leviticus. I'll take, take your time. Leviticus 17 11. I got to move on this one. I got two more, and then I'm, I'm going to be done, and we'll come back to this on Wednesday. Hopefully, you'll join us on Wednesday night so I can continue this teaching. Leviticus 17 11. For the light of the flesh is where? In the blood. Whose words are these? God. Yep. Who wrote them down? Man. What's, what was the man's name? Moses. God's representation. God's representative. Moses wrote this because God told him that the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. So scientists sometimes believe that around two to three weeks that when that baby or that embryo is being formed, yeah. that they're connecting the blood from the mother to that embryo. Yeah. Right. So life is in blood. Right, right. Not what the doctors say in six right. weeks. Right. No, it's in the blood. Five weeks, right? Whatever the time is, they change how we I don't know. So the light is in the blood. Yeah. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for the souls, where it is the blood to make an atonement for the soul. He's saying, he's talking about the blood covenant. He's talking about that light is found in the blood. I think it was Benjamin Franklin. They were trying to heal him of an ailment and they were draining his blood. Yeah. Well, how if you drain my blood, 
the life is in, yeah. that's why we stop nosebleeds. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Number one, it's, it's uncomfortable. But number two, the life is where? In the blood. Yeah. So God's view is that life starts in blood. Yeah. Not when you determine. Right. Just like the example, I can't just go around telling folks, teaching my kids, three plus three is seven. They will mess up every test fail, and then I'm at the, at the school cussing the teacher out. But I taught them it was seven. Well, you taught your child wrong. Because the mathematical standard is three plus three is six. No matter how you teach them at home. Are y'all with me? Look at this thing. Go to Acts chapter seven. Look at verse 51 through 55. It's so much in this. Yeah, Alright, let's go to let's go to, go to 51 D. I'm sorry, go to 51. Uh y'all get anything yet? Yes, yeah. It's a little bit? Okay. Yes, a Praise lot. God. Praise God. I just want to make sure you leave with something so you don't say I didn't breathe. Yes. Alright. Acts 751. Let's go to 51 D real quick. Alright. Uh, when he gets to 51, we're going to look at something. Remember, the premise of this was that they offered their children to the tabernacle of who? Molech, Molech, which was a practice of sacrificing children, which is almost in line with this whole idea of abortion. It's just this whole idea, okay? I already answered the question, man cannot tell a woman what to do with her body. But it's not man telling you, it's God. Amen. Right? That's why God, no other man can tell me how to run my house. But God does. I ain't listening to no preacher. That's fine. What does God say how to run your house? Not your uncle, God. Not your granddad, God. Okay? We have 51 yet? Not yet. Okay, good. Let's read. I'll, I'll get my Bible. I'll try to give you some time. We'll get there. All right, you got it? All right, verse 51. Here it is. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have you not and your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which show before the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murders. Talking about Jesus, verse 53. Who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to their heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. That means they got real firm, they got mad. Verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly unto heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Verse 56, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Now, he's preaching something that they don't like. They start gnashing on him. He doesn't retaliate. See, that's why all y'all going to hell. He doesn't do that. He just looks to heaven, what the church should do, and say, Lord, I see your glory. Because the moment that they won't endure sound doctrine, you need to know that the end is near. Yeah, yeah. See, when people don't disagree with you, it's not time for you to get angry. Right. right. Amen. That's why you. That's why you need to get your gun off. That's why, Lord, I just thank you for it. You gave me the opportunity to share this word with them. God, now you prick their heart. Yeah. One man plants. Yeah. Another man waters. Talk to the church, yeah. but yeah. God gives the increase. Yes. This issue of abortion. Yes. You have churches endorsing. Last month you had churches endorsing pride. When the Bible clearly tells us that pride comes before destruction. Yes. Why would we support something? I ain't talking about even the movement, just the term pride. God speaks and says, I resist the pride. So why would we support this? And I'm asking the church to be the church. Write this down. If you are the church, you will be unliked. Yeah, they're not going to like you because you're going to say opposite of what they say. I just told you what he thinks about a, a life in the womb, and but you have people that say, that's a hate message. Now, show of hands, don't lie to your pastor, don't lie to me. Have I preached a hate sermon? No, don't keep it a buck. Keep it a buck with me. You can be honest with me, and I promise you I'll be okay. If, if I preach the hate sermon, come on. No, no. This has been love trying to show us. What does he say? Okay. How, how do you raise your children? What does he say? How do you love your spouse? What does he say? 
How do you love one another? What does he say? All right. Look at this. Look at verse 58 in that same text. Uh, Stephen is telling them, hey, you're stiff today. All right. My last point in we're praying. Write this Norris nugget down. Write this Norris nugget down. Empathy cannot lead to passivity. Say it again. Empathy cannot lead to passivity. You know how many people that I've counseled as a pastor talked to that have had some terrible situations and that presently what they're in is a result of bad decisions on their part and a result of bad decisions on their parents' part? And I have to show them the love of God through a text that most of them don't even believe. So, so I empathize with the woman. You know what? I, I'll never know what it's like to be a 15-year-old girl and not have a job and have to take care of a child that my uncle gave me. Yeah, give us deal with it. Yeah, come on. I know you're used to shopping. Praise God. We've got to deal with some issues this morning. I'll never know what it is to be a single mother. Right. Number one, I'm a man. Right. Number two, I'm not single. So I'll never know what that feels like. I'll never know what it's like to be a girl at church. You're worshiping, but this man has been looking at you the whole time. And now he takes advantage of you. He gets you pregnant, and then you're the one that got to stand before the church. So I'm empathetic, but I can't be passive. Because that Negro that got you pregnant, he was wrong. And he needs to repent. And he might have to stop preaching until he gets done repenting. Are y'all quiet? The uncle needs to repent. The, 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 the cause of whatever happened, I'm empathetic, but I can't be passive. And the problem with the church is that we empathize, but then we become passive. And now we don't want to preach nothing because you don't know. And that's why I answered the question at the beginning. I can't tell the woman what to do with her body. So I direct her to the person that can. Are you with me? Yeah. Our empathy as a church can be passive. Um, go to John chapter 8. Ralph, just come and play. We're going to play softly. John chapter 8. I'm done. I'll keep preaching. John chapter 8. This is the woman caught in adultery. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Who, 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 where are the people at? Look at verse number 11, though. He's empathetic in verse 10. Look what he says in verse 11. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Here's the passivity of the church. We stop there. I don't condemn you either. Just walk off. No, Jesus said, I don't condemn you. But here's how you get right. Go. problem is, we think empathy, or we think uh, truth is harsh and wrong. I don't know who said that, but praise God. But truth is right. I can be empathetic with you. I can say, hey, this is rough. What you're going through is rough. I don't know what it is, but let me just tell you what God thinks. And I think that I believe that what he would say about this situation, that although the situation was bad, God can turn it into some good. The body has a natural way of rejecting things that are not good. Your body has a way of telling you it ain't time. Talk to me. It, so, so we have to deal with that, and I'll deal with it more on Wednesday, and then also try to deal with it on next uh, Sunday. Here's the last point I want to give you, and we'll come back to this next week. Last one, stay faithful to the Word. Who are you in this audience today? Maybe... This message is hit you smack dead in the face online. Maybe you turn me on because you're like, I didn't come to hear that. That's okay. Here's what I want to love you with today is that God formed you. God made you. And that God will and has forgiven you. That's why he sent his son Jesus. 
on an old rugged cross and died for your sins. All you got to do is confess it. We are not endorsing sin. But we are not here to condemn sin. We are here to tell you that there is a Jesus. Talk to me. There is a Jesus that can save you. Whether you think he's blue eyed and blonde here, whether you think he's an afro or whatever, his name is Jesus. He will, he shall set you free. Yeah. Father, I pray yeah. that somebody knows that you love them. Yeah. Father, I pray that this sermon doesn't push them away, but it loves them enough to say, I don't have to face this on my own. Yeah. Gender identity, I don't have to face on my own. Abortion, I ain't got to face it on my own. But Father, I can come and get guidance from you. Father, we say no to sin. And we say yes to righteousness. We say no to lies. And we say yes to truth. Your word is true. John 17, 17, sanctifies through thy word. Father, bless this, bless this nation. This nation needs you, Jesus. They need to repent. The church needs to repent. Church members need to repent. Preachers need to repent. Father, we ask for your forgiveness right now, Father. Saturate us. Cover us in your blood. But love on the lady that had the abortion. Love on the man that paid for that. Love on them right now. But Father, prick their heart so they can ask this fundamental question. What must they do to be saved? Father, we give you glory, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. The minister is coming, the minister is coming to offer you salvation. Take the time with it as we give it up, yes, sir. As we offer you the Lord Jesus. Will you stand to your feet and give God a hand clap of praise? Say it 
this word in the day that you hear my voice. Heart, not your heart. If that's you, we want you to come down. The third invitation is, uh, is a church membership. Maybe you are saved and you need a good church home, a Bible base, Bible preaching. But thus say the Lord, church home, we want you to come. Online, type into the chat box, somebody will promptly get back with you. We'll give you a few minutes to think of those three.
Number 10, five star leadership class, 8 a.m. on campus. New member orientation class, 9.15 to 9.45 a.m. On campus, Sunday school class will be at 9 a.m. starting on July 31st. Sunday school class will be on campus only. The Mother's 2 p.m. Sunday school will continue to be virtual. Sunday morning worship service starts at 10 a.m. Check your bulletin at the Bethel's website for updated weekly activities July 11th through the 17th. Pastor Norris will be the guest speaker at St. James MP Church at 68th Church Anniversary, 6650 Bond Avenue, Santa Maria, Illinois, as we speak. <laughs> Upcoming events for August 2022 Vacation Bible School will be August 1st through the 5th. 6 p.m. to 7.45. This year theme, created in Christ, designed for God's purpose, scripture, Ephesians 2, 10. For registration, Deacon Rupert, or Sister Cheryl Amos, and also, you can see Sister Kanisha for the sign-up registration today, and see Sister Andrea for to order your t-shirts. Thank you. New Bethel Church, we're going to celebrate our pastors and first lady for fifth anniversary. <laughs> On August the 19th and the 21st. That will be appreciated then on Friday, August the 19th, and the service on Sunday for our first family. The committee's asking for love for you can start by putting in your tie bundle on the past anniversary. For more information, follow on the dinner. And also to iterate on that, so Friday the 19th, we were having a night out with our pastor and first lady at the Regency Hotel starting at 7 p.m. <laughs> we're going to have a sit down dinner. The cost of the dinner will be $35. We're asking the Bethel Nation and family and friends to come and enjoy. We're asking all to dress semi formal. Semi formal. On Sunday morning, we will complete our celebration with pastors and first lady. Our colors are, for that day, for that Sunday, royal blue, white, and silver. Royal blue, white, and silver. Start shopping now. Because I have. Okay. And we plan to have a glorious time in the Lord. After service today, y'all, I will, that's me, We'll be sitting out there with a sign-up sheet for you guys to sign up for the past that person. Also, Sister Maria Davis will be also helping because we're on the committee. Thank you. So we'll be doing that today right after the service so you guys can sign up for the Friday night. This is our past and our first lady's fifth anniversary, so let's show them love and how much we appreciate them. Okay? All we got other announcements. Contact me and Amos for information regarding the start of the Bethel School Pantry or to volunteer. The children and youth ministry still looking for volunteers if you're willing to work with the ministry. Contact me and Tyrone, Sister Cancer, and all the other ministry leaders. Kingdom Builders Sports and Recreation Ministry needs coaches and assistant coaches, fitness instructors, program leaders, concession stand volunteers. If you would like to volunteer, please see Sister Jeveta Carter, Sister Charlie Gould, or Sister Elizabeth. Don't forget to tune in every Thursday for Life and Lunch via Facebook Live 12 noon. All men is ages 18 and older are welcome to join the Christian Community Ministries Open Gym every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. If you want to start your day with prayer, we have Saints of God in the Emergency to minister our church family and all those that need a prayer every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and Sunday at 6 a.m. Call at line 605-313-444 on access code 630-854. Please mute your line. As saints of God, let us invite saved and unsaved family members and friends to our Sunday morning, Wednesday night worship service. You can still be in our all in for the building fund drive for the second floor commission of our recreation, Rec recreation building. You may put in your tithes on the, on the all in building fund. To report any member who is sick or in the hospital, call the church office. You can also get a prayer request for our permanent usher. Everyone is to continue supporting our media ministry. Don't forget to include your prayers, our members, relatives, friends, those in bereavement, service men and women, and our leaders in countries. Y'all have a good day.
all stand. We have a good time in church today. Now, as we depart from one another, let us all our ideas. Father God, we thank you for each of your people. We thank you for your awesome word on today, Lord God. Father, we ask that you would just bless each and every one of these people that are the sound of my voice. Father, as we depart from each other, we ask that you would give your angels charge over us, Lord God. Father, when we leave this place and get to our destinations, I pray that you would allow our destination, Lord God, to be in a better peace than what it was than when we left, Lord God. Father, I ask that you would just go with us, Lord God. Go before us and fight, Lord God, before us, Lord God. And, and keep up. And keep us covered, Lord God, for those things that are coming up the river. Father, I ask that you would just continue to move in such a way in our lives. It is in Jesus' name.